my half inch tubing, I'm going to push it into the carbon filter output, and I'm going to get my bend correct so I know how I'm going to plumb this thing, the right size tubing. I'm going to plumb it just about like that. This RO tubing is very forgiving, so uh, it bends and twists really nicely. You don't want to uh, bend it too far at the fitting. You want to let it have a little bit of natural uh, run to it. So I'm doing that here. Now before I hook this up, I'm going to flush this carbon filter. And we're going to flush it into this large beaker. And I'm going to show you why we need to flush carbon filters. Which means we're going to turn the water on now. Uh, and before I turn the water on, I double check all my connections and give the pre-filters a little tightening just to make sure they haven't loosened and shifting. To flush a carbon filter on any water filter, especially one with a 120 volt AC pump motor and a 120 volt AC solenoid coil, is make sure nothing is plugged in. Make sure the unit is depowered, unplugged from mains power completely. So you can see my booster pump's not plugged in, the solenoid is not plugged in, there is no power on this unit because there's 29, 30, 40 points of connection on here. Any one of them could leak. And if you're working on a, while you're working on a water filter, uh, AC mains need to be completely decoupled. So not only shut them off, unplug them. So to initially turn water, to run water through a filter here, you have to open the manual override on the solenoid valve, which is over here on the solenoid valve. This little switch right here. We talked about decoupling the water filter from AC mains. You're wondering, well, how am I going to get water through it to flush a carbon filter if I don't power up the solenoid valve? Well, the solenoid valve has a manual override switch on it. So if the solenoid coil were to fail or any other thing, you could manually open it and still make water. Now to manually open it, you take the little white override switch here and turn it perpendicular to the pipe, just like that. We're not going to turn the water on full blast. We're going to slowly turn it on because this, these pre-filters are full of air and carbon dust. So we're going to slowly turn it on. It's going to fill up the pre-filter slowly. And we're going to start seeing the carbon filters flush into this beaker. Watch. It's going to be really cool. Right now I can hear the pre-filters filling up. Water's going into the sediment filter. Now it's starting to fill the carbon filter. Once the carbon filter fills up, the water will start coming out here into the speaker. Notice all the air bubbles coming out as the carbon filter is purging. I'm getting air and carbon dust. And this is everything you don't want to be going into the pump or the membrane. I'm going to turn it off to show you. So now you can see this is the carbon dust from the, see our carbon filters are a really highly catalytic KDF carbon, uh, which is a bed of KDF 85 underneath uh, a big thick bed of highly active catalytic carbon. It's the best carbon on the planet, but it's dusty. And so you need to flush all the dust out. Now this beaker is only uh, a one gallon beaker. You need to flush this carbon filter for about 20 gallons, 30 gallons, until this water is clear. You can see it's obviously cloudy and impregnated with carbon fines. So after about 20, 30 gallons, this water will clear up. The air bubbles will stop spewing out of the carbon. It'll be a, a consistent stream of water. And that's when you're ready to hook it up to a pump. Now I'll tell you a trick. If you're not in a rush, the best way to flush a carbon is to do what we're talking about, flush it out for 20, 30 gallons, and then shut it off and let it sit overnight. It's called bedding the carbon. Let the carbon sit in the feed water overnight, and the carbon will bed down, and all the fine dust will separate from the main chunks, and the dust will come out on the next flush, and bedding the carbon is really a way to keep the dust from coming out right after you flush it. And what we're trying to do is stop dusting off completely. So a good flush, bedding it overnight, really is the best way to do it. But if you need to make water, just make sure you flush it for 20, 30 gallons till this water is clear. And here you can see the water's coming out uh, crystal clear. 
That's water that has been sediment filtered and carbon filtered, and there's no more carbon fines in the water. And so now it's ready to be plumbed to the rest of the unit, to the pump and the membrane. So to do that, I'm just going to drain this tube really quick. Okay. And we've already cut it to length, so now we're just going to insert it into the pump input. Wipe up any little water there. And I'm going to put on a high pressure clip. Although this is the low pressure side of the unit, this is the feed water coming in, it's not necessary, but we like to put them on anyway. And then I'm going to put this, uh, the warning tag back on the carbon filter so people know when you change a carbon filter, it needs to be flushed. This unit is ready to be uh, initially started up purged. Okay, we've been flushing for 20 minutes now at line pressure. Uh, and you can see the water is already a lot clearer than it was when we started. Uh, the membrane storage solution is almost out of the membrane. And now is a good time to hook up mains power and turn this thing on and tune it in. So before we hook up the mains power, we are going to turn off the manual override on the solenoid valve. And you heard the pressure switch disengage. The pressure gauges on the RO have wound down to zero, which means the solenoid valve is closed, the unit is depressurized, and now is a safe time to hook up the mains power. On a BP6010 pump, there is an on-off switch. We're going to keep it in the off position. The mains power cord is here, and we're going to plug it into 120 volts. The little piggyback cord here is for the solenoid valve. So we plug the solenoid valve into it. And what this does is, when this switch is turned on, this piggyback cord is energized and it will open the solenoid valve, allowing water to flow in the water filter. The pressure switch will turn on and the RO will turn on. Here we go. So now we're running. 